<laughs> oh no, the first band thing we've ever played on TPS and it's a blues. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. And? Hey, Deshaun over here. Come on! <laughs> I, I'm going be in and out, so. So, you notice there's a strange number of strings <laughs> on Deshaun's instrument over here. What do you mean strange? I thought that was about yours. Um, you got extra ones. Why are they so tiny? <laughs> Oh, so we yes we have a bass. Spending the, the entire audience in the first five minutes. Cool. Uh, Deshaun's a mate of mine. I've known Deshaun for a number of years um, since you. I think first started doing the Kylie gig. I think so. And probably we started two thousand ten or something. There you go. Started topping. Um, Did you say Kylie? Sorry. <sighs> okay, so let's go through some guys that you work with. Is so, there a guy on the drums as well? I, <laughs> I'm nothing like Kylie. <laughs> Uh, Dougie, um, life, my maybe. dear friend, who's been my drummer for, we worked it out before, 15 years, something long like that? Time, long time, yes. uh, really? It's been a long time. Still Dougie. talking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes. Um, so, yes, Dougie Massard. Um, oh. Right. So we're going to have a look at some bass stuff today. I have many questions. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we want to have a look at, um, A, the use of effects and mm -hmm. things, um, but also as a guitar player, I would love to be able to play bass, but I'm the world's worst bass player. So I want, I want to get you to help us with that. Sure. I say help us because Mick's going to have a go as well. Brilliant. Okay, cool. Um, right. So uh, as I alluded to before, mm -hmm. some of the people that you've worked with, um, Kylie Minogue being the, uh, when I first met you, you were doing some work with Kylie. Yeah. You were her bass player for how long? Uh, almost eight years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I stopped doing that gig earlier this year. Right. But um, yeah, it was uh, literally just a few months short of eight years. Wow. Which is kind of rare for a gig like that, I think. Okay, yeah, so you went with run. Kylie? Yep. Um, Leona Lewis, I've done a bunch of touring with. Um, I work with Jess Glynn now. Right. I have done since, I think, February, March last year, which has been amazing. And. Um, just loads of other people. I don't know. Um, you're an yeah, you're an in demand hot young gun out there uh, with the two <laughs> less strings doing the business. I like okay. that. This is like a compliment and then a little uh, little no, dig no, at no, the end. I like no, that. No, no, no. Honestly, <laughs> uh, it's it's one of those things. As a guitar player, I thought, oh, bass would be easy, but in actual fact, it's really, really tough. Well, it's funny. We were talking about this before, weren't mm. we? When we were kind of looking at the at the board, and it was like, I think. From a physical standpoint and technical standpoint, it's easy to learn the instrument to play to the notes, to get a sound out of it. Right. You know, it's not like, like I said, it's not like trumpet or playing cello or something. It's going to take you months to actually get a decent, to actually be able to go, to go like to this. To get a note. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, going to take yeah, yeah. you a long time. It's kind of easy to get yourself around it. Um, but I think what's hard is actually all the tiny little things that you just don't really pay attention to until you actually start getting into the instrument. Then you're like, wow, that, that guy grooves really hard because of right. A, B and C. It could be his sound, it could be his feel, it could be, um, well, it's always feel, but like where he's placing the notes, how long a note is, how short a note, do you know what I mean? It's all yeah, those yeah, tiny yeah, little yeah. things that actually kind of, that's actually what, you don't even realise that's what's turning you on about a certain bass player. Right. And, and then when you really analyse it, you're like, oh, that's because every time he plays that note there, it's this long, every single time. Or, and, you know, they're instinctive things that you would do as a guitarist as well. Sure. But I think bass, because it's so, um, it carries a lot of power. You have a lot of weight in the band in terms mm. of, you, you know, if I play a wrong note, it, everything changes. You, I can't hide. Of course. I can never kind of just go, oh, I can't remember the chords in this pre chorus, so I'm just going to sit out like you can never do that you have to be you know in charge of kind of you can never be a passenger kind of thing do you know what I mean? and, yeah, yeah. and so you kind of think in that case all of those tiny little things actually make a huge difference because sure. not just rhythmically but harmonically you're carrying a lot of weight you know which um it's weird because bass players don't have in general it's funny how instruments have people who play instruments have different personalities you know mm -hmm. you can from meeting someone, you can tell if they're a keyboard player, guitar, do you know, do you, okay. drum, you can definitely tell a drummer. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but, um, 
like bass players don't have that upfront kind of per- drummers have that thing very confident very kind of like do you know what I mean there is sure. a funny guy in the band there always that kind of character but bass players don't have that bass players are very much like very chilled kind of in the background kind of people but they but we play an instrument that is not like that at all okay it's weird very interesting I've actually never thought about it until we started talking about it before right. actually um because quite often you see people play that, that are amazing and you'll be like I don't like technically amazing mm. and you'll be like I feel like I just want to hear that other guy play one note instead because I yeah, feel yeah. more but that's, so what that's is just, that? that do you know what I mean that, but that carries across all genres I mean totally. it, you know, it's a conversation it's an ongoing and, conversation and all we've been having for well. years uh, yeah of course um you know, and it's and that is one thing. When I first, before I had met you, before I even knew anything about you, there was a, a video of you playing, and you Uh-oh. had played. There was a couple of notes, and I heard that, and I just went, oh, "Okay, that's," you know, it was so. That that groove thing you're talking about, yeah. it was that, it wasn't a guitar player pretending to be a bass player. It was right. someone who's lives the bass. And that's not even like a thing that is like okay, therefore. I'm better than someone else. That's my focus. That's what sure. I actually love. That's my yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. like yeah. my priority in in anything and playing with anyone. Even it's like, how does it feel? Does yeah, it yeah, make? Yeah. Does it move me? Do you know what I mean? Because that's actually, I feel like the whole point of music is, you know, people talk about it as being a language mm-hmm. and whatever like that. It is a way of communicating something. And if you're not, if I'm not feeling what you're trying to communicate, and something's something's gone wrong in this line of, do you know what I mean? So I, I feel like. That is my, it's the thing I think is the most important to me. Sure. In music, just in general. You know, I want to okay. feel that thing. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit throughout mm-hmm. the entire rest of the day that we have you for. Great. Um, so, if we can just get you to start playing a groove, anything yeah. that you feel like, and then I'm going to get Doug to dance along, do his <laughs> thing. Let's go play. Um, just, okay, so anything. Just anything, um, because... First of all, this is a this is a very special bass. She is, yes. Uh, very old bass. I've got basically all the bits for it as well, all the hardware and everything, original case and all that kind of stuff. 63? It's 63, yeah. Okay. So we just hear the sound of that sure. for a second, and then we're going to get into a, some effects and sounds and okay, yeah. jams and stuff. So this bass makes you play a certain way as well. Yeah, and, man. And oh, all instruments that have was, that, don't they? That's so kind of good. Like, I've got to, I can, just, I've got to ask a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come on in. Come on sure, yeah, for yeah. a second. So just to explain, um, Deshaun is playing through JHS Colorbox into uh, one of our PA cabs because we ordered a bass sample and it didn't turn up on time like idiots. But but it's, you're, it's working okay for you? I'm I'm very easily pleased. And are they flat wounds on there? No, they're just uh, I can't normal quite strings. See. Yeah. So interestingly, when you... The sessions and things that you do, are you mm-hmm. happy just to turn up with your bass and your board and plug into whatever they've got going? You, you're confident I'm, that you can get a sound out of whatever's there? I've kind of been in situations where people have said things like, we can't have any apps on stage, we can't have any speakers. It has, wow. It's, it, so I've kind of gotten used to being able to go, okay, that means I need to control everything here. Right. Like, um, and having cabs behind me is going to be a luxury to have that feel wow. and that's not the case at the moment at the moment i have um loads of speakers and 
cut stuff behind me and it's it's beautiful. What's the, what's the best rig you're using? At the uh, it's, it's an Aguilar DB751. I see, I see them everywhere. And two um, SL4 tents right. underneath it. Um, and it's great. It's loud. It's, it's one of those rigs where I remember the first time I plugged into one, it was like, let me just put everything flat. Okay, that's. That's there it is. Yeah. Uh, okay. And it's like I want to hear the character of the bass. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I just yeah, want, yeah, I just want yeah, this yeah. to be louder. That's all. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah. If if That's an app just had a master volume on it, I'd be happy. So let's start looking at some, sure. um, you know, how you use, uh, the, you know. So we've got, you've got a large format Cali seventy six, yeah. uh, which is amazing. So, and I, you use this. This is on all the time, basically. This is on most of the time. Um, for things where it's kind of, uh, it's quite a quiet song, or it's quite an intimate situation where I really need like a lot of um, emphasis on dynamics and things like that. I right. kind of take it off because I feel like it kind of, it's it's very easy to just kind of like, just touch the string and it, it just go. Okay. You know, or, or the reverse where you're kind of trying to play something loud and it's kind of, you know, what, I, in those situations then I'll switch it off. But that's literally, like one or two songs. Can we hear set. that? You know <laughs> so, um, so if I, this is off. Um. And then on. It's, it's a, a level thing as well, isn't it? You can really hear yeah, like yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a drop in level and things like that, which I kind of, I feel like it, it's it's cool to have that push and pull with it. Yeah, of, right. You know. Do you, ever, do you ever use it for sustaining? Like if you've got to play long sustaining notes or um, is it a bit odd in that situation? I do, but that's also situations where, like I was saying in slow songs, where I would push it off. Yeah. Because sometimes it is like, okay, this note is, is going like this and then the next one is going like that, not kind of like this is going, fading away and then the next one's coming, you know what I mean? Where in, like, for example, in ballads where you're playing lots of long sustained notes, you kind of lose that. Everything just feels like it's here. <laughs> I mean, you don't get that natural kind of ebb and flow of the instrument. But um, I try and play as many notes as possible, usually. So. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, joking. But it is, sometimes it does blow my mind, like literally like at the end of a song, something holding a note and just going, wow, this is still really loud. You know, I love it. It's great, <laughs> but um, but yeah, there's some songs where it's, it's really like, okay, you, you're saying too much. <laughs> but yeah, I, I couldn't live without it now, to be honest. Fantastic. So that's that's kind of um, pretty much on all the time. This okay. this is on all the time, and that's pre um, anything else. Right. So basically, tune her into that, mm -hmm. into this, and, and so then... that's like a, so. This is like a master EQ that you've got. Pretty much, okay. yeah. So, and that goes back to what you're saying before that you you're getting everything, all the sounds basically from the board. Exactly. And that you can plug That's, into anything and tweak it, and yeah. it's all happening here. That's what made me get that. Right. Was like, okay, now I have no control of my sound. So, got it. Not only does this, even if you just plug it in, and put everything just flat, it sounds great. So then you have all those, the potential to after that then shape your tone kind right. of thing, and it's great because. It's instant flexibility. You pick up a bass that needs a bit more treble or whatever mm. it is. Because normally I just have everything on full because I like to keep things simple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, but um, for example, I use a Music Man Stingray most um, at the moment and, well, have done for years. And I just have the volume on full mm -hmm. the um, and all the kind of EQ on it, all on full. Right. And then I use this to kind of shape the tone, which is why if you have a look at the um, the bass and the treble, I mean, the bass is boosted and the treble is cut because it's quite, it, that bass has quite a toppy, right. okay. bright sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Music Man is active, isn't it? It's, a battery it's active, it's yeah, active. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it's a very loud bass that has loads of sustain in it anyway. So it's kind of like adding this is just like, it's just, you know, like something that's triple chocolate. You know what I mean? You know, you can get a chocolate cake and then you have like triple chocolate where you have like this, uh, icing's chocolate and there's a scoop of chocolate ice cream. Yes. It's too much, and then you go but it's amazing. And then you go and it just explodes and liquid yeah. chocolate sort of pours out everywhere. Oh, they are quadruple there chocolate. Quadruple chocolate. Oh, I've one-up chocolate tube. Okay. <laughs> so that's so that's that 
sound yep. um, and the EQ. Now, we get into some, some of the funkier yep. sounds. Now, this is really interesting. This is the Future Impact. This is the guy that did the Deep Impact. That's right, yeah. Has made these. That's this one here. Yeah. Um, so, um, where are we now? so, I have an Akai Deep Impact, which mm -hmm. I used for forever. Um, but um, I got scared because yeah. it, it's a it's a rare pedal. It's temperamental. There were times where it's almost like, impossible okay. to repair if right. something goes wrong with it. I couldn't believe what you were telling me before about them. That the yeah, the circuit, circuit board, board is, is actually on a bit of cardboard. Right. As what opposed is it? To, it's right. It's, so oh, it's actually, a bass synth pedal. So let's have a, let's have a listen uh, to this. To yeah. The, okay. Well, actually, Dishen has the original, and I'll show you it. It's, it's fascinating. So um, basically, on the original, there are, there's nine presets, and yeah. then you can edit each one as you see fit and save that sound. On this one, there's, I think, 99, which, because I was so used to the Akai, mm -hmm. I've only really messed around with the first nine. Right. Until today, where we kind of, <laughs> when we were setting up, you know, I let loose. And you, and we were in going, another room, yeah. Whoa! Because <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was kind of thinking, well, what can, how good can they be? You sure. know, what's it going to be? Do I really, and then I was like, oh. That one's that one's alright. <laughs> that one that one's a bit spacey, but I should you know. So I just you know, if you guys want to leave me here for a couple of days, then um, I'll kind of get into that. But it's kind of um, it does loads of different things. So if I just go through the first nine. And so to switch through, you kind of press up and then mm -hmm. on select kind of. You can edit each one of these, for example, if you want a bit more cut off. You can kind of, it's it's really, you can actually do a lot with it. Right. Um, even though it looks kind of basic. So, it's a lot that, of so, even, so, so it's the a funny lot of thing fun. about that sound was even when you're up high, it's, yeah. there's all this bottom end. It's amazing. And it's actually, it's hard to tell in this room, to be honest, how much bottom end there is in this. It's a really rumbly kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, got, yeah. It's got a lot of um, you'll meat to, to it. When the audio is done, like I was listening through the headphones. Is that okay? Right. And yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you can, can, you can hear. It. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So okay, so the idea mm -hmm. with that, can you grab the original? If I yeah, sure. Hold on this for you. So, right. Yeah, so here it is. This is the lead. It's a bit of dust. It's been on a bookshelf at home. The books probably have less dust than, than this actually. Um, so that's the original guy. Mm -hmm. I'll put it next to that one so you can have a look on this little camera. I don't know if you can see that, but um, yeah, it's. I mean, what a cool looking pedal. Yeah, First yeah, yeah. All. No, it's amazing. But um, so when I first met. Um, Paul Turner, he's mm. got a few of these, and he, he one wasn't working, and he he gave it to me and said, "Oh, you can have a look at this if it yeah. work." And it is the best sounding, best designed, worst manufactured <laughs> right. panel I've ever seen in my life. Um, the circuit board's a piece of cardboard. Um, the you know the resistors and capacitors have basically been printed onto the cardboard. So if if a track breaks, you can't repair it. Right. Um, if it gets, if it's in a damp room and the cardboard then absorbs the moisture, it just 
you know, it breaks, so they're really, really fragile. Right. However, the the sound and the amount oh, of man. bottom end that that oh, thing man. has is unbelievable. Yeah. And especially for, you know, it's digital, um, you know, processing. Yeah. And when we talk, we, we do the moves and that sort of stuff and the, and the octaves, and you mm -hmm. expect to have right. that sort of... But when you talk about digital synthesis and that, yeah, it's very rare that you hear something that has that, that amount of bottom end. Right. You know? And yeah, it's for me, it's sort of with that the the bass synth sounds that yeah. sort of stands apart from hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Even between these two, you know, obviously you can do a lot more with this, mm -hmm. but there's something the, about, the, the original. about the quality of this sound yeah. that is different. There's something about it that is a bit more exciting to me. Sure. The thing is, you put three of those three of those versions that are working next to each other, and they'll all sound different. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, so it's the same designer, the Future the Impact. Same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the yeah. same guy that came up with this new version. Cool. Um, okay. So that's that's the synthy. Yeah. It, it, are there other synthy so type sounds that you use? I kind of use. So I've got. It's a bit unusual to have two octave pedals, I guess, but I kind of. The reason for that is I use this one here. Yep. Um, I just have the lower octave turned all the way up. Okay. The sec two octaves below turned all the way down, right. and the direct line turned all the way down. So you're just getting an octave below. Okay. Made up by the pedal. You're, right. you're not getting any kind of um, bass, which is actually kind of like a synthy kind of sound. This is actually one of the pedals that I turned the the Kali 76 off for. Because it just it, it's just too much for it to handle. It just kind of breaks up and so it is kind of synthy in in terms of essentially a synthetic There's like sound. There's like overtones of things happening with the with the note. Yeah, wow. which is kind of cool. And then so the re that. That's kind of why I use two. So I have one where the one octave below is turned yep. all the way up. Yep. I have one where two octaves below is turned all the way up. It just saves you having to kind of go, okay, so. Yeah, yeah, of course. To, to yeah, you turn that one down. And, and this one all the way. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, mate, I, for, um, I forget to, to reach in from drop D between songs. So, you know, <laughs> halfway through, I'm going, this sounds a bit rough. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so two octaves down is like, it's. Obviously, one's OC2, one's OC3, so they do sound different. Yeah, yeah. I prefer, much prefer this sound. Yeah. But there's something weird about the two octaves below on this pedal that I actually really like. So I kind of use that for the yeah, two that's octaves that below. Um, cut, yeah, so it's a lot for a lot of bottom end. What Maybe the, too much. Um, what would be the context that you would use that kind of sound in? Is it for specific um, parts of so songs? Or? Definitely. There, there's lots of kind of um, very subby kind of synth bass sounds that are hard to replicate with bass. So that's kind of where I use that. Obviously, if it's something that it's still not right, then I'll use a Moog or something to kind of get a really 808 y kind of sound or whatever it is, something really subby and big. Do you but, play keys as well? Yeah, I play a little bit of right. keys as well. Yeah, well, yeah, specifically for those bass synth sounds. Exactly. Right, okay. Dan, so, can yeah. you explain to the, all the guitar players that an eight hundred eight is not a tube screamer? <laughs> uh, okay, well, it can be. Yeah, it, so it can be. Yeah, so but in the world in the world of synthesizers, um, for me, I just use um, a Moog Little Fatty. I haven't upgraded that for years, just because I kind of you know I'm not a synth. Nerd, I'm not great at programming. You know, it's sure, something that sure. I, I I like doing. Um, I'm okay, I'm okay at it. I'm, you know, I can do it, but it's not like wow, this guy's a whiz. It's it's not really what I love. That's why I've got so many pedals, <laughs> so I can, I can avoid playing synth. But um, I think as a bass player, you kind of you kind of need to know your way around. Sure. A synth, and that's one that I know my way around, and. Like I can make it do what I want it to. Do you know what I mean? So you see, so there's a crossover between the synth world and the bass world. Yeah, completely. Right. I mean, probably um, the majority of gigs, 
that I've done, pop gigs that I've done, have been kind of 50-50. Really? Bass and synth, yeah. Wow. Um, at the moment with, with um, Jess's gig, it's mostly bass. There's a couple of songs that I use synth on. But yeah, it w it's not uncommon for that to be, that ratio to be more, way, like, wow. more even. Wow. Um, but yeah. Okay, so. So what's next? We've got the Mutron. Okay, the so. Mutron. So we've had, um, everyone's heard my Mutron before. Okay. But the, they haven't heard it in the context of what it's sort of, you know, famously used for, which is with the bass. Right. So, yeah, take us through your Mutron and how you use well, it. To be honest, I don't get to use it that often because it's such a. I'll just, such an underwater kind of sound that like you can't That's really so cool it's so much it's fun so... To... I, I i kind of sometimes when it's like there's a little space for a fill or something mm. i might just switch it in and quickly just for just, a second and then just take it you know what i mean but um I, n I don't get to use it as much as i'd like to right put it that way but oh, what a sound i mean that after I got this, I didn't really check out any like envelope filters since then, and sure. that was probably like a good ten years ago that mm -hmm. I got that. So that there might be stuff that's better. I don't know at the moment. I, I really don't know because I kind of stopped searching. Is that what I just knew she was the one? That's what booty. That's that's the booty thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I kind of just left it at that. I mean, it's got Stevie Wonder, high ground, Eden high ground, yeah. No, well, that's the that's the sound though. Actually, he that's, probably did, didn't he? He played everything, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. yeah. All right. So onto the Sans amp then. Mm -hmm. um, this is again another EQ stage preampy type thing. I basically started using it because um, I just needed something. I just needed some drive, sure. basically. And then it was like I needed different types of drive, and this was the simplest solution. It's three different. Um, types of drive that you can save in. Um, you, just oh, double, wow. you just double click on one of the buttons to save whichever thing. So you've it saves up the here. it saves the knobs. And yeah. Everything. So wow. for example, so if I've chosen number one here, yep. Um, to find out where that is, you kind oh, of just follow the light. Where very it cool. It flashes and then it stops when it is in the right spot. So you can kind of go, okay, so that's, that's where, where that is. is for yeah. That. And then you can do that with all of them. It's a bit of a slow process, but sure. it's easier than having three different pedals. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and it's a cool sound. So it kind of like it just makes it easier where you can kind of you know go through, find where everything is, adjust what you need to, double click on where you want to save it. Okay. And that's it. You kind of move on. So you kind of got three different types. I don't actually know what, which ones, what kind of things I've got. Kind of more of a boost, I guess. Well, oh, that I was using that one for. I'm not. I don't remember where. I haven't used this for a while, to be honest. Thinner drive. Um. So yeah, it's kind of just a handy thing to have because quite often, something I didn't realize until, for example, listening to the bass stems of a certain song, you right. kind of hear. Oh, that is actually just a bass with a bit of drive, played with a pick, underneath something that's this whole electronic kind of bed. It's, it was re really weird. I, wow. There seemed to be a phase where that was happening a lot. And I was kind of like, wow, I didn't expect that to be the case. So, you know, on a Kylie gig, Kylie gig which is quite electronic, mm. I was finding myself quite often using that with a pick. Really? Underneath all the kind of... 
stuff that's in the track, that's all the bottom endy kind of synthy stuff and right. whatever. The actual bass was playing like a like an overdriven wow picked part because I guess it kind of makes sense if you think about that bottom end being so big, especially like say for example that mm -hmm. um, or even that mm -hmm. um, to actually make it cut having that kind of overdriven with a pick so sure. you really get that attack you really get that kind of like sparkly crunchiness but you have all this warmth of this synthy stuff underneath do you know what i mean yeah so it's, it's kind so of a that, nice blend but is that is that two separate signals from the bass doing two separate things or is it just the bass on top of what's going on with the synth the bass on top of ah, okay yeah. right yeah wow so for example in that situation that would be a case of whatever's on the track mute the bass i play that and leave the synth okay. bass on there so right. i'm blending with that which you know that's that's seems to be like a lot of the kind of skill if you want to call it that or just the kind of like the, the the way of thinking in terms of pop gig approaching it that way of kind of like i need to make this feel live yep. and sound live but i also need to blend with all this stuff that's going on sure so it doesn't sound like oh i'm just jamming on top of a track because that's never a nice sound you know when you hear someone like kind of it's basically the whole track's done and it's perfect and that's what everyone loves to hear on the radio. Mm -hmm. And then there's just people just jamming on top. It just doesn't translate, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of need to have a nod to what everyone's used to hearing, but also give them something a little bit extra. Sure. To have that live feeling, but not too much so that it's like, wait a second, what, what is this? You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, that's the way, if I was watching a gig, I would kind of think, you know, that's what I want to hear. Yeah, yeah. I just want to digress for one second. Sure, sure, sure. That I find really interesting. So, you're playing with, you know, some of the biggest artists in the world, right? And you're on these massive tours. And actually, you sent me one of the coolest photos uh -oh. that I've ever had. Uh, you were playing in Egypt. And you sent oh, me a yeah. picture of the pedal board in front of the pyramids. That's in, in right, front yeah. Of the, the, what's the big pyramid? Yeah, Giza. The, um, the, Sphinx. The, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got the Sphinx, the pyramids there. That's and there's, funny. They're so cool. But, that was the first gig we ever did with Kylie. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he said, oh, this is really cool. I got this picture there. I'm like, oh, it's mad. <laughs> yeah. I'm fascinated as far as that sort of high, like you don't get any higher profile than doing a gig like that, right? The um, the elements as far as what's expected of you in that sort of gig mm -hmm. and the things that you're given. So you, you mentioned getting the stems yeah. of the tracks. Yeah. Um, so they'll yeah they'll, they'll go into the multi tracks and just yeah give you everything that you need so you hear exactly what's going on. Um, I mean you won't get that all the time, but sometimes it's like I can't really make out what I'm going to play. Sure. What which there's several bass parts. There's okay. several things going on. Or, for example, it's like things that are layered, so then it becomes a case of going, well, I'm going to program this sound, and we'll leave that one on, or whatever. It, you know, you kind of, it enables you to then take it all away and go, okay, I'm going to do a blend of these two, so I can take that one out, mm -hmm. or I'm going to do just this one, and then they're just going to leave the rest in, or whatever it is. Sure. Or play this sound, but EQ that bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of like, okay. it's kind of take so it from there. So, your, your top three bits of advice for people who are, wants to be doing these sorts of gigs? Top three. Be nice. Be nice. It's a big yeah, thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, don't, Doug. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> Actually, don't be an asshole. I want to check. You're, are you all right, Doggy? I'm fine back here. Yeah, yeah. You sat there. I was going to come give you a hug. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm behaving myself. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I feel bad though. No, it's no, 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 it's good. It's good. Wait, how's it good? We're gonna turn up. The, we're gonna... Dad likes me like that. Just right. Okay. 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 Perfect. Oh jeez. I feel like I'm getting. I'm in the middle of a no, feud here or something. No. Um, yeah, just be a cool person, like a nice person. That's kind a of big like, part um, of it, isn't it? It's a so, huge part. If yeah, you're spending yeah. loads of time with someone, and they turn into someone that's very difficult to get along with, or mm. is like demanding, or just just difficult and it's very hard to kind of keep everyone cool because everyone has to stay cool for so long yeah, 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 yeah. at times you and know you're in not close all the time, quarters for a long time. close quarters yeah, you yeah, kind yeah. of you're in each other's pockets all the time you're just yep. literally in each other's space you kind of if you're on a tour bus your home is is with 10 other people or whatever yeah. it is and yep. where your bed is your mate's bed's just there you know you can reach out and touch him and same with above you know so it's kind your, of like, your advice is don't 
<laughs> Depends on the bus. Uh, no. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It's sort of um. Yeah. Be nice. I don't know. Be. I don't. It sounds really silly, but be good. Like when I say that, I mean like care. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, care yeah. about what you do. Like. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know when yeah, you first yeah. ever start gigging and you like you really care and yeah. you research and you get the best cables and you get the best bass because that guy used it. Yeah. And you don't even know what you're doing yet, but you just want to. And then you practice the songs a million times and you have to rehearsal ready. And that, the motivation for that, for me, a little bit is fear. Okay. It's the fear of being rubbish or the fear of sure. not being good enough or the fear of not doing the song justice. Because I really hate that, like that feeling where you're like, you know what, I'm actually just jamming here. This is not cool. Yeah, right. I hate wow. that feeling. Yeah. So that's a big motivator for me. It's actually, I still have it now. I kind of want to be inside the song all the time. I don't want to just play a song. I, I don't want to. So you're not thinking. You're not thinking. Okay, well, think, here comes a verse, and you're actually just you. You're so comfortable with it, you can just. I think if you're thinking like that, you can't. I can't play you music. You haven't done your homework. I, but I can't actually play. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, coming yeah, in today yeah, when you were like, oh, let's play some stuff. I was like. It made me a bit nervous, but then when we started playing, I love that because kind of nervous. because That's I am um, the best thing. Because we were just it was a vibe, you know. We were hanging out before yeah, and yeah, we yeah. were chilled, and we just started playing. It was like I can actually not think, and I can just play. Yeah, and it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's fine. Really... And kind of when if I move out of that space at all, I'll make a mistake, or I will. If I start thinking, I can't play. Basically. Wow. Who are your favourite players? Dish, if that's even yeah. Possible to um, it's funny because um, I, when I first started playing bass, I listened to bass players. But then, within a couple of years, I kind of just listened to bands and just music and kind of didn't really check out solo bass players or anything. So like, probably the biggest influences, um, Michelle and Degiacello, probably the biggest influence. I mean, hearing her play was like, wow, this is actually. That, I really felt that wow. like deeply. Yeah. It was like, okay, there's there's some fire in this, and it's and it's cool at the same time. Like it's really unique. Abraham Laboreal, oh, okay. um, it's kind of the guy who made me want to play bass. You know, it was um, I was saying to Dan before I was playing saxophone. Um, I was playing saxophone in church, and then we need they needed a bass player. <laughs> they didn't need a sax player, so I just started playing bass. And I remember because my dad plays bass as well, so I kind of just picked it up and just started mucking around. And I saw a video with Abel Boyer and I was just like, oh my God, this is like, that's real. That's, wow. like, that's what I need to do this, for real. So it kind of, that was kind of my, that's probably the two biggest influences. Um, but yeah. Did you, did you go to base school? To base school, yeah, that's just one weekend in a year. <laughs> by the way. No, um, I did um, study for a bit, I studied, um, at WAPA, which you probably know of, the West Australian oh, right. Academy of Performing yeah, Arts. Yeah. Um, but I didn't finish my degree, I kind of dropped out after a couple of years. Um, it was kind of um, a time where I was starting to do loads of gigs, yeah. and I was too immature to see that, well, that's cool, but you can always go back and do that. Mm. Why don't you just the gigs will knuckle down there. and yeah, yeah. you know get the most out of what you can get out of this course and the teachers exactly and the amazing the same students. Thing. I'm sure there's loads of, right. loads of people that do the same thing. Um, I mean, we had some amazing teachers and the, my peers at that time were incredible musicians. Um, I was always in bands where everybody else was better than me. So I'd be getting my ass kicked, but I'd be like hungry oh, for it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, you know, Mick and I talk about that a lot. Be the worst, be the worst oh, musician man. in the band. Yeah. Okay, right. I've got some questions, Mick here. Uh -oh. right. Bit of Mickey magic. I'll come and sit back here. Um, still talk to the camera, actually. There's, okay. a, there's another stool. Does this, does I've this probably work? been looking in the wrong place. I kept looking at looking at you, actually. It's fine. So yeah, it's fine. We're all friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's try and pull something out uh, useful for guitar players, because the majority of people who watch this show are guitar players, mm -hmm. and I rather suspect that, like me and Dan you guys end up playing bass on your own recordings and trying to play bass. Yeah. So can oh, you dang. give us <laughs> Can you give us some tips? Your number. No. Cuz I, I I have to tell you a lot of people who maybe don't play guitar would look at the bass and the guitar and they think that's oh, the same thing if you're a guitar player you can play bass. Yeah. Dan alluded to it earlier. I can't play bass for toffee. Yeah. 
and it's really weird that... I don't know if I believe you guys. But no, the funny <laughs> thing is, what you are saying before about care, yeah. I think the thing is because we do care, and because we care and we hear ourselves play bass, we go, we go right. oh no, this, this is awful. Right. Yeah, right. I can't, I, I find it really hard just to play right. even on the beat. So could we, I don't know if this is even going to be possible, but could we do some like bass basics? Sure. And, and in well, maybe think... even in terms of over a straight four okay. groove and how that works, maybe something to do with the relationship between the kick drum and the... Yeah, what are you listening okay, for? Yeah. When it, yeah, when that... If you want to groove, that yeah. thing that we all allude to being groovy, yeah. you know, and want to sit in a groove, as, what does that mean and what are you listening for to try and achieve that? That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I was due one. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so in terms of translating bass thinking, if you want to call that, yep. to yep. guitar thinking. Yep. It's difficult for me because I don't know how you guys think, but I would say... Play the wrong chords in the wrong time. Right. <laughs> hey, that's the same as us. No. Um, I think this is going to sound silly, but focus on rhythm more than harmony. And I know that's silly because there yeah, is a lot of harmony mm -hmm. in bass. You do need to be involved in that. I'm not saying not to play harmony. I'm, it's just... Um, something that you guys probably don't even think about when you're playing a groove or whatever we're thinking about a lot so it's like you're playing loads of chords we might be playing one note yeah basically the focus has to be then on the rhythm of it the feel of it and kind of like like what i was saying before the kind of um the length of notes where your ghost notes are all those kind of little things ghost notes ghost notes they are <laughs> the scariest of all notes but um what's a ghost note so ghost note is when you kind of, so if I'm playing like, so that note before, that, oh. that kind of muted note before, right. and um, we were talking about, I actually was reminded of this the other day that I kind of went through a phase of taking out all the ghost notes in my playing, right. just because I re realized I was relying on them a lot for subdividing basically. So you, you gated yourself? Notes. I gated myself, <laughs> right? because I was like, well, I need to be able to come in on one without a run up. I need to kind of know <laughs> Just where nail things are. That, nail that down bit. Inside yeah, right. my own body before I put it into the bass. And then kind of after about six months I started like bringing them back again. And it changed it was everything was different. Wow. I think that would be I think that's something that we could probably get a demonstration of, is it? Yeah. So you could play something super straight and then yeah. play it with ghost notes so we could hear the difference yeah, in that. Yeah, I can try. Does that make sense? Yeah yeah. What sort of so what, it, what sort of thing should Dougie play? Actually even if we went um, like um A lot of momentum, like forward motion, it kind of makes you want to dance a little bit more. You know what I You're mean? You're changing the the length of the notes length as of the well. Notes as well, yeah. Because That's so it's cool. Like, it's like all of the notes. You, you guys know this as well. It's like they all need to fit in a certain space and time. Sure. And if you shorten one, you kind of need to lengthen the other. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah, kind yeah. Of, um, and then sometimes you need to leave some air in between to like make the impact of that next note or the one before it more you know, impactful. Do you know what I mean? It's like all those kind of Yeah, so, so you get light and shade in the song, I guess. So you might exactly increase your ghost notes when it's getting going and they're yep. soloing going on or something. But maybe when, sorry, Dan and I have a running joke. We always say when she's singing, because right. we've all been in so many bands with, right. with girl singers who right. have to shut up for when they start singing. But of course, that's your life. So that is, <laughs> when she yes. starts singing. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, make some space. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> make right. some room and kind of yeah. So yeah, do you want to try uh, doing that? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, should we do that. All right. um, so okay, we play the in, same, we're in, same yeah. thing. Yeah. 
Okay. You split, you split the beat around. That was cool. Yeah, that was that's great. where I get. So, so if if I'm ever trying to play bass and program drums and do my own thing, that bass line that you were playing there. Yeah. So. Um, Would you put the, Would you put two kicks on that? Do do. I, I could have done, but I was keeping the space open so you could put the ghost notes in because otherwise we'd been fighting each other. Okay. So, hence, when he was putting the ghost notes in, I just kept it. See, oh. that's even like the, like a drummer's mentality f from being having this relationship so close between the drums and the bass. He's automatically thinking like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, this is an instinctive thing. I could have grabbed those. Hang on. I grabbed all his notes, so I didn't want to grab them because they were so cool. So I stayed out of the way. <laughs> That's oh, amazing. Think, how think, quick? How quick is that synergy between? Because I'm always oh, fascinated between that. That I don't think it even has a. Well, does it? Is it? Is it instant? Do you kind of? It is instant. You know, if you can play with somebody. Yeah. Right. Can you play with Doug? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> You can't fish with compliments like that. You can't. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't <laughs> Put me on the spot. I had to, I had to do that. No, I, I'll set um, up. No, no, no. <laughs> brilliant. Um, no, it's like sometimes it's instant that you're just in. Uh, you don't have to think. It's happening. Right. And then sometimes it's like, oh, I need to move here. You know, I need to shift here. Yeah. Am I doing? The, and yeah. and then it's a case of kind of listening to yourselves back and going, actually, no, that was me. That was you. Or I think that conversation needs to be ongoing all the time between drums and bass. Wow. Oh man, we've yeah. got... So <laughs> we're approaching the hour. We we need to do more bass stuff. People have been asking us for bass right. stuff for so long and it's fascinating. We've got a spare cause... room. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, just yeah and... I've got 99 sounds to get through. So okay. yeah, if you just leave me <laughs> there, I'll be fine. This has been amazing. Great. Yeah. Thank you so oh, much man. for taking the time to come out and do you it. Ha you actually don't know how excited I was. To, after we made this, this date, was like, okay, doing it on this date. I was like, oh my god, this is actually happening. I mean, we wanted to do this for years. Like, to get, come up, get you to have a look at, you know, you're the, you're the wizard, you know. I need, you, you know. So I've been so excited, even just driving up here, I was like, oh my god, this is going to be awesome. Oh, <laughs> I've been so pumped. Oh, sorry Seriously, about that. no, it's great. No, it's great. <laughs> okay, so look, so let's... turn up insulted the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> we, we definitely weren't sure how today was going to go, like whether, you know, in what direction it would happen. So please let us know what kind of other bass content you want to do. Dan and I have been saying for probably over a year now that we needed to get a proper bass player in in order to do this because we just don't have the knowledge. I mean, you know about no. signal paths and pedals and all of that, but we just, we simply don't have the knowledge of the instrument to I think the easiest way to say it would be to, this is a, has a bad kind of connotation, but dumb it down and but just focus on what's left. Like really focus on what's left, you know? Like it's only one note at a time, but if you really focus on it, where you're putting it, you, you actually start, if you experiment with it and you feel, you start to feel where it's like, oh, let me try and push a little bit, see what that feels like. Let me try and be a bit more on. Let me try and be back. Let me yeah, lengthen yeah, yeah. this note and not that one. And I don't know, it's kind of um, just zoom in on things, yeah. I guess. Yeah, but it's, actually a, it's, all a, the difference. it's the time for me. Yeah, as, I, as a guitar player, I play naturally all over the place and usually behind. Right. So I'm so far behind with the bass and my, oh, there's one. <laughs> There goes one. I'm the same. I'm, yeah, I feel that inconsistency. Even like as we've been playing today, I've been feeling like, okay, you're moving now, you move. You know, it's kind of like. But you're aware of constant it. You're, you're thing. constantly listening to what you're doing and you're aware of what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. And no doubt you also have the experience to be able to do that and push to make and pull the adjustments. As, yeah. Which yeah, you can yeah. only do if you experiment with it and I mess around and kind of. That's amazing. Well, yeah. we're going to have to do this again. Um, Let's do it. Yeah. Thank you so oh. much. Um, we're gonna make some noise. Yeah, why not? Um, Please, let's not play a blues. Yeah, yeah, no, no. We're just we're just jamming. I, I want to hear some sounds. We have okay, to yeah. get the, the yeah, yeah. Let's let let's yeah. let Dish uh, cut loose Dish can, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So, um, first of all, I want to say a massive thank you to for you all just to, tuning in and watching today. Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon for making this possible. Thank you guys so much. Uh, to our preferred retailers, uh, which uh, in the UK and Europe is... And this is music of Guildford, Surrey. Uh, in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia is... Pedal Empire. Ooh, ooh. Uh, and uh, in the US of A... Uh, Riff City Guitar. Hello, chaps. Uh, and, chaps and finally, uh, if you feel like heading over to netpedalshowstore.com, 
purchasing yourself uh, a lovely garment. Um, we might get some uh, some bass strings touched by the one and only to as well. So <laughs> have, them on the, have them on the store that you can bid for uh, at your own leisure. Um, yes. So massive thank you. Let's. Um, oh man, thank you guys. I, I'm really sorry. I've, I'm overly familiar with the drummer, and I, I completely. Dan and forget. Doug have been playing in bands together for fifteen years. It's nearly fifteen years. It's nearly fifteen years. Uh, actually, sorry, it's two thousand four. So let's be specific. Fourteen years. And Doug is going to drum in the that pedal show band, which is taking shape. Yes, and I'm going to try and shoehorn in to share whenever he's available. <laughs> I'm coming. I'll be there. Uh, fantastic guys thank you so much we're going to make some noise uh, but we'll see you next week cheers guys bye 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 <laughs>